Chris, there weren't any answers Saturday night. Have you been able to find any in the meantime? Yeah, I mean, we, we have we haven't reviewed the game as a as a coaching group as yet, but I think in the in the cold hard light of day, there's some obvious parts of the game that we didn't get right. Um, yeah, our work around the ball was um, you know abysmal, and uh, our contest work around the ground wasn't at the level that it needs to be. So uh, we were beaten by a really good Western Bulldogs team, but we didn't give an account of ourselves that that uh, we're overly proud of. Is there a review of the process leading up to the final? Are there question marks as to how you approached it? Oh, well, there'll be question marks on any of it, the whole um, aspect of it, Rich. I mean, there's, yeah, there's no point right now looking and suggesting it. And, and it would be wrong to suggest that one part over another um, is more important. But clearly, yeah, we'll review every part of the performance, whether that is the preparation that we had leading into it, whether it was... Um, the way that our guys went about it structurally, um, the way they went about it from a mindset perspective. But um, look, there's no hiding from the fact that we were way off of our best. As I say, we were beaten by a, a much better Western Bulldogs outfit. But, but uh, we didn't give an account of ourselves, as I say, that we're, um, we're proud of it all. Everyone talks about a scar being left to <coughs> get a massive final blowout and then clubs either dealing with it poorly or not dealing with it at all. What's Port Adelaide's approach going to be? Yeah, well, the, the, challenge, the challenge with that so far is in how quickly you have to get the players out. So realistically, we've done all of our exit interviews um, and the players have left the club. I mean, having sat in all of those interviews, it's fair to suggest that um, the guys you know, aren't going to be mortally wounded, but clearly we're going to have to review this and review it hard and we're going to have to support both the players and also the coaches through this next period of time in order to start the year next year in a in a way that gives us another chance to risk the pain of of what we're all feeling right now. Off field, does it make you rethink where your list strategy is at the moment? Uh, well, we, we rethink our list strategy at, at every point, you know, through the year. Um, you know, we we have no doubt that we've got some improvements to make from a list perspective, but that's not to suggest that they're more important than all of the other things that we'll do. You know, we'll review the way that we, as I say, went about our preparation. We'll review the way that we coached on the night. Um, we'll review the, the way that, um, as I say, the players approach the game. Um, they're all really important parts of um, the review process and to suggest that one right now is more important than the other would be wrong. It's a, um, it, it's a, it's a group review that is going to require everyone to take their own um, portion of responsibility for it, including myself. In terms of that list improvement that you just touched on there, Chris, <coughs> Jordan Dawson's um, been documented as saying wants to come back. Is is he target number one for the Port Adelaide Footy Club? Oh, he's certainly a, a player that we've got extreme interest in. Um, you know, uh, as both Adelaide and us say often, we you know any South Australian player that's looking to come home, we have a responsibility to do you know our due diligence on. Um, but I think he's the type of player who's obviously had a fantastic year. We had some real interest in him in his draft year. Um, you know, he he uh, would certainly complement an area of the ground that we think we need to continue to work on. Do you think you're ahead of Adelaide in that race to land him? I don't know where Adelaide are at in the race to land him. So uh, from my perspective, we'll, when the time comes, put our best foot forward. Uh, and if he wants to come to our club, then fantastic. You talk about those exit interviews, sitting down with a Hamish Charlotte. Does that ever get any easier breaking that news to someone like that? No, they're not. Um, you know, I've obviously had to go through them a number of times now. And um, you know, when you're saying goodbye to um, players who have been significant members of your club, they're, they're not easy. And uh, you know, at various points in time, you have disagreements with where you see people's futures at as well. They're, they're natural. That's not something that we haven't experienced before. It's you know, certainly something that I expect to deal with in the future. But, uh, you know, when you ask specifically with regard to Hamish, he's been an extraordinary servant of this club for a period of time. Um, you know, we, he obviously wants to continue playing and we'll support him in whatever we can do to, to help him to do that. Um, but he's been a really important member of our club. Chris, externally there's a lot of questions about Ken Inkley. He's been <coughs> on contract for two years. Where does that stand internally? Well, as, as you say, I mean, we I think some context needs to be put around where we're actually at right now. Um, you know, clearly our performance on the weekend was not where we wanted. Uh, and that's not just on Ken. That's um, all of us have responsibility there, as I say, myself included. Um, you know, we've now put ourselves in a position two years in a row where where we're there to compete 
Um, now that's a first step, but clearly we've got another step to go. Um, and you know, all of our people will take the, the right responsibility for that, including Ken. Ken does seem to be copying it left on. <coughs> A unfair, and B is this more on the players that result? No, 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 no. This is a this is a joint responsibility. Ken, you know, is absolutely the type of person that puts his hand up in these situations. Um, but uh, as am I, we we all have responsibility for this. Um, clearly, the, the senior coach in any club is the is the person who bears the brunt of this, and I don't think Ken would expect any different. Um, but in the cold hard light of day we do need to sit back and work out okay well what has got us to this point where we're now finished third two years in a row it's not what we want we we want to be better and we're going to have to sift through our program right now and say okay well what is it that's got us to third and what is it that we're going to need to do to get up to first because that's ultimately you know the the, the area that we want to end up at where are you with staff appointments in terms of extra assistant coaches, how's that process? Yeah, going? we'll work through that now. Obviously we you know we're we're dealing with um, Jared Schofield who's who's heading back to, to Perth, which you know we, we wish him well in a in a more senior role than he had here. Um, you know, but we'll sit down over the next week or so and plot out you know what we want from a an assistant coaching perspective. You know, we've got some fantastic assistant coaches here who we think um, <coughs> can take on more responsibility. And um, you know, the challenge with that is going to be to, to find the right spots for them. You've got a strong contract profile in terms of players' contract next year, the year after, and the year after. So, what does that do in terms of where you are in the trade market? Yeah, we. Well, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, you're right. At the end of the day, we, we don't have too many players who are out too far. Um, you know, we've got a list of players who are off contract this year that we'll work through over the next you know few weeks to, to either recontract or. Um, for those players to look for whatever alternatives may actually exist for them. But um, we, we're under no illusions that we need to get our list better. Um, but again, that's not, that's not to suggest that that's the only place that we need to get better. There's parts of our department ac across the board where we're going to need to make some changes. But yeah, I don't think we can deny right now that um, on Saturday night we were shown up by a midfield that um, probably batted deeper than, than what ours is. Um, we went into this year with a plan of, of giving some more game time in there to some players who we believe are our next midfielders. Some of that was taken up through injury. Um, we're also going to have to move some guys around in order to, to get some more midfield minutes you know, for the likes of Dersma, Rosie, Butters. You know, we, we've mentioned them previously, um, and this is not for one minute to suggest that... Um, you know, uh, there's a reason for Saturday night's performance, but we think that those guys are the ones who are going to take us forward. Um, and we need to give them the opportunity to do that, and not just on the periphery of, of you know, the game, where they've probably spent a fair bit of time this year based on, um, you know, the, the fact that they've at various times been significantly injured. We, we've got to get those guys in there to provide us some extra depth in the midfield. Do you have any clarity on what Michael Voss' status is at the moment? Uh, well, Mike was out of contract uh, at the end of this year. Um, you know, he's obviously you know, made his intentions well aware in terms of the want to be a senior coach. Um, you know, it, it seems like there's one job available at the moment. We'll have to, you know, we'll allow him to work through that and we'll make whatever assessments that we want to make from there. But, um, you know, there's also a time frame on all of these things. You know, I've, I've got a responsibility to the club into the future and um, if there comes a time where we need to move, then that's what we'll do. What is that? Is there a set time that you can share on that? Is that weeks or...? Oh, it'll be weeks, yeah. I mean, look, I'm not the type of person that's going to wait forever. Um, and Michael knows that. That's that's not anything that we don't discuss regularly. So I don't, I don't want to seem too cold here, but I can be pretty cold in these situations. If if we get to a point where we need to make a decision, then we'll make it and you know, Michael will have to live with that. You've made some tough calls, obviously, the last couple of days. Garner and <coughs> are there any more that you can share that have been... Oh, we've got a list, list who are out of contract. There's no, there's no one else right now who we're going to do this right now. And <clears throat> there was no one through this period that's asked for a trade either. I mean, there, there's some guys who clearly might want to look at, you know, what their alternatives are in terms of, um, you know, more, more games potentially at other clubs. And, and we'll allow those guys to, to contemplate that um, because it's equally beneficial for us to, to be going through the trade period with, you know, what we have planned, I guess. 
to see where we end up from a list numbers perspective. But um, I think right now the, the delistings in the short term are done. I was going to say that some reports out of Melbourne about Tom Cleary potentially <coughs> being um, a target for some clubs. Is that one you can shed any light on? Or? Uh, I can't shed any light on whether he's a, 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 you know, a person that other clubs would look at other than to say uh, Tom finished the season out of our team. Um, he's a good player and I can understand if teams were. Um, but Tom didn't express a want to leave this club. And uh, I think in fairness, you know, we, we have this year played three tall def taller defenders, obviously with the addition of Aaliyah. Um, it doesn't take too much for one of those players to not be around and we need someone, whoever it is, um, to be able to come in and play at a level. And uh, we've been fortunate this year that we've had four really good, you know, tallish defenders who have been able to show that they're quality AFL players. But uh, Tom won't be going anywhere. There are also reports about two-year uncontracted guys, Riley Bonner and <coughs> Stephen Motlop being required players. Is there any update on, on those guys? Yeah, I mean, I think in fairness to, to Riley specifically, he had a, an amazing end to the year. Um, you know, if you'd, if you'd said to me that he was going to be probably be our best player in the preliminary final, you know, seven weeks ago, I, I wouldn't have believed you, mate. So, um, you know, full credit to Riley. He, he's got himself to a position where he deserves to continue on at the club and we've expressed that to him. It'll now be up to Jason Cripps and his management to um, to work through what that looks like. Motts is another one who we think has got some more footy in him. Um, again, the challenge will be where we end up from a from a contract perspective. But I, look, I imagine that Motts will be here. Talked about midfield depth before. Is Trent DeMont someone that the club's interested in? Uh, Look, we, we haven't made any overtures at the moment to specifically to, to Trent. That's not to say that we don't have interest. Um, but there's a lot to play out over the next couple of weeks. As I say, I mean, you guys would know who is out of contract with us. You know, we've, we've got some flexibility. Um, we've got a core group of young players who we think are going to take this club forward. You know, I'd, I'd be sitting here more worried, clearly, if we had uh, a list that we didn't believe could improve. Um, we still think that that the list has got some improvement, which I think is really important right now. We, you know, look, Saturday night was an, an abomination, I get it. Um, and we're not hiding from that. Um, but we think we've got a group who will get better and um, that'll be our challenge now. Just back to Dawson for a sec, is the, your first round pick on the table for that? Is that, is that no, we, we haven't that? entered into any sort of meaningful discussions. And typically, you know, our club doesn't start that type of negotiation until we know that the player wants to come to us. Just so, so no, 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 up terrible. to you, Tom. You go, mate. So, That's fine. <laughs> that was awful. Uh, no. I'll just run you out. I've no. strategy at one no, end. Fine. Um, some reports as well just about Jeremy Finlayson that he could be on his way very during the trade period. Is that another one? Uh, look, we're interested in players who you know want to come to South Australia. I mean, the, the challenge with all of those things is to is to know in the market who has an interest in in coming here. You know, over time, we've been really good at targeting different players to, to say, look, we think you know um, whoever it might be might be able to help us. Um, you know, if, if someone like Jeremy Finlayson wanted to come to South Australia, then of course we'd have some level of interest. You know, um, but as I understand it, he's contracted with GWS, so um, you know until those things play out, um, you know, we won't be uh, speculating too much. Chris, is there a message for the supporters that sort of? Three <coughs> games down there with their scarves and seeing never tear us apart and then jump online and really tear the club apart. I mean, uh, is there any hope that you can give for them? Oh, well, look, I, I think, Jody, ultimately that um, right now we're not hiding from the fact that Saturday night was a really disappointing um, you know, game f for everyone. And, you know, I, I can, I'm sure you know full well that the people who are involved are the ones who hurt the most. Um, you know, we have gone through, as I say, two days worth of exit interviews where our players are hurting, um, our coaches are hurting. You know, from from my perspective, it's it's not nice to end a year in the way that we did. Um, but I think there should be some optimism on on our young players getting better, um, and you know, we should be approaching 2022 with the same expectations that we had this year. But ultimately what we do know is we're in a position right now where no one will believe that until we get back to a, another preliminary final and get the job done. So again, no hiding from that. That's just our reality from here. And, um, and I know that we've got a, a, both a, a coaching and playing group who are willing to take that on. Chris, back to your tall defenders. <coughs> the school of thought that you do need a taller defender and sometimes you've got Jonas and Cleary 
undersized against a Hawkins or those bigger type forwards. Uh, do you dismiss that criticism, or is that a fair criticism that you might need a bigger defender? Yeah. Look, I don't, I don't dismiss it because I think everyone is entitled to have an opinion on where they think we can get better. Um, I think historically, John, I've answered this question by saying that we're more interested in the attributes that players provide. Um, you know, most people would have suggested that we needed a taller defender and that Aaliyah had fixed that. But if we need another taller defender, then you know, we're, we're now up to 200 plus centimetres. And I'm interested who around the competition actually has the size to compete with someone like Tom Hawkins anyway. Um, well, you look at a May or a Lieber or a Darcy Moore. Well, they're, they're not, but they're not big, are they? I mean, look, the, you know, I, I don't particularly want to argue with you, yeah. but um, Aaliyah would be bigger than, than Jake Lever. But he doesn't take your key forward. Yeah, well, yeah. So, granted, um, you can always do with players who are tall. Um, you can always do deal with players who have long arms, um, you know, you, who have different capabilities, um, you know, I, who, who can compete physically um, with whoever it is. You know, I think that, again, on the weekend, um, you know, we, we left our defenders in one-on-one -on -one situations far too often because the ball was just coming in at such a pace that, you know, our team defence aspect wasn't able to, to get set. And again, that's, that's one of those things that you look at and reflect on and say, well, you know, we didn't get parts of our game right up the ground, which then affects you know, the way that our team defends. So, you know, the coaches put some time into at the start of the year thinking about the game plan that they're going to play based on the list that we actually have. Some of this year was about, you know, how do we, how do we um, work with our midfield in order to provide them with the best opportunity to get the job done, which then allows, you know, someone like Aaliyah to become an All-Australian, you know, intercept defender. Um, so, just, look, they're things that we're going to have to work through. We'll, we'll reset, you know, as we spoke about before, with, our, with the list that we'll have for 2022. We'll definitely have to add some depth to our midfield, um, but we think that can be done internally with a little bit of luck from an injury perspective. Someone like <coughs> Daniel Talia, would you be at all, as a club, at all interested in speaking no. to him? No. Let's check on the Brownlow, Chris, and Ollie and Trav and those players actually go to the function. Yeah, so so at the moment there's um, there's a group of people who will go across to um, to Perth um, for the Brownlow on, on Sunday. I think I think it's both clubs from here who are sending players over. I, I don't... I don't 100 percent know, but we'll have some people who are going to be in the room uh, over in Perth on Sunday. Chris, just back to your assistant coaching scenario. Obviously, the boss uh, and <coughs> Schofield was not going on in the background during the finals campaign. Not ideal, but was it a distraction at all? I, th I think it's a it's a reasonable thing to pose. What I would say is that um, there's a there's a whole ecosystem of movement that goes on behind the scenes that that you guys are well aware of. Um, that some of it bubbles up at various points in time and, and it makes it uncomfortable when names are, are put up there. To suggest that it was a distraction is totally wrong. Um, you know, I imagine there are coaching movements that are going to happen, teams still in the, you know, teams in the grand final. Um, so to suggest that it's a distraction, as I say, you know, I, I think from my perspective, certainly, I mean, you can all have your an, an opinion on it, um, but from my perspective, I don't think that that, that was one thing that contributed to you know Saturday night at all, um, and I would think that both let's say Michael and Scoey would would feel slightly disrespected by the idea that either of those two didn't have their minds fully you know on the on the job on Saturday night. I can tell you that both of those guys don't want to leave the club, having um, contributed in a negative fashion towards you know what was a really poor performance. So you're well down the path, though, in getting a replacement for Sky, for example? Oh, I'm down the path, Tom, yeah. yeah. Well, to suggest well down, I guess, would, um, yeah, is another thing. But, uh, yeah, as I say, I think we've got people within our club already who can who can take steps up. Um, we'll have to ascertain who else, um, you know, is in the market. But, um, look, I'm, re I'm really confident in our coaching group that, um, that they can get better, and clearly we all need to, including myself.